Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. In today's AutoLine Daily, will we see cars with 660 cc engines? Someone's coming out with an aftermarket autonomy kit. And later on in the show, we'll run you through what it takes for automakers to generate ZEV credits in California. But now the news. When U.S. car sales get reported next week, don't hit the panic button. You watch. The mainstream media will be screaming that car sales are down, and they'll probably blame all those recalls for the drop in sales. But here's why we say, don't worry, be happy. June of 2014 has two fewer selling days and one less selling weekend than June of last year. And once you make that adjustment, the daily selling rate will be up. Merrill Lynch forecasts that adjusted sales will be up 5% and the SAR will hit 16.2 million. Automakers are downsizing engines for better fuel economy. Ford has a one liter three cylinder engine. Fiat has a 0.9 liter two cylinder. So how small will engines be in the future? That's one of the topics on our television program, AutoLine This Week. On that show, Chris Thomas, the chief technology officer at Borg Warner says, 660 cc displacement is the practical threshold for turbocharged engines. He says once you go below that, the clearances and tolerances become a difficult engineering challenge. But whoever thought we'd be referencing motorcycle sized displacements when talking about cars? Small commercial vans have become more popular in the American market recently, and now Ram is showing off the ProMaster City. It's actually a rebadged Fiat Doblo and will come in two different configurations the two seat tradesman cargo version and a five seat passenger wagon. It's powered by the 2.4 liter Tiger Shark engine and made it to a nine speed automatic. The ProMaster City is assembled in Turkey, but the US cargo version will be upfitted in Maryland. No word on when it will hit US dealer showrooms. Looks like things have gone from heartache to relief for the folks over at the National Corvette Museum Remember that sinkhole that opened up in February and swallowed nearly $1 million worth of rare Corvettes? Well, it turns out that attendance, membership, and merchandise sales shot up sharply since then. In fact, the sinkhole attracted so much attention, they're even thinking about putting some of those smashed up Corvettes back in the hole. Now, here's something I didn't think was possible. A California startup is going to come out with an aftermarket kit to turn your set of wheels into an autonomous car. The company is called Cruise Automation. Their kit will work with a new Audi A4 and the cost is $10,000. A roof mounted system contains cameras, radar and sensors that feed a computer in the trunk. It's really an adaptive cruise control system with steering and it will only work on select California highways. But the company is working on adopting it to other cars and using it on more roads. We keep saying that autonomous cars will be here faster than most people realize. And the fact that there is now an aftermarket kit shows how quickly this technology is going mainstream. Hey, be sure to join us for AutoLine After Hours starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. Our guest is John Kraftcheck, now president of True Car, but formerly CEO of Hyundai Motors America. He was a PD person over at Ford before that and a grad student at MIT who helped write that book, The Machine That Changed the World. Join me for some of the best insider discussions about what's going on in the automotive industry. Coming up next, why automakers are so keen to put electric and fuel cell cars in their showrooms, even though they know they'll lose money on every one. Sonata from Hyundai. Automakers are putting electric cars and fuel cells in their showrooms, not because of public demand, but because the California Air Resources Board has jiggered the game in their favor. 
California virtually created the global EV market on its own by mandating that automakers must generate zero emission credits if they want to sell any kind of car in the state. Since California accounts for 10% of the U.S. market, since 10 other states have adopted that mandate, and since the U.S. market is the most profitable in the world, most automakers have to fall into line. Starting next year, major automakers have to have enough ZEV credits to cover 14% of all the vehicles they sell in California. The ZEV program is horrifically complicated. You practically need a PhD in government regulations to wade through the Byzantine maze of procedures, timetables, exclusions, additions, revisions, updates, and definitions. Even CARB's own staffers struggle to keep up with it all. So we're going to give you a simplified rundown of what it takes to generate ZEV credits. It starts with Neighborhood Electric Vehicles, or NEVs. This includes vehicles like the GEM, which used to be sold by Daimler Chrysler, but is now part of Polaris. I don't think any automakers offer NEVs in California anymore, but they get 0.3 credits. Next up is the ATP ZEV. That stands for Advanced Technology Partial Zero Emission Vehicle. Translation? That means a hybrid. An ATP ZEV will only get you 0.6 credits. Then comes what the California Air Resources Board calls a Type Zero car. These are plug-ins like the Chevrolet Volt that have less than a 50 mile driving range on pure EV power. A Type Zero car will get you one ZEV credit. A pure electric car like the Nissan LEAF that has a pure EV range of 75 to 100 miles is what the CARB calls a Type 2 car. It gets three ZEV credits. And then a car that can travel over 300 miles on pure EV power and can be 96% refueled in less than 15 minutes is called a Type 5 car. That gets you seven credits. If you can refuel it faster, it can get you nine credits. With today's technology, it's virtually impossible to refuel a battery electric car in less than 15 minutes. And that's why automakers are coming out with those fuel cell cars. They need the ZEV credits. As one industry insider told me, this is our choice. We can lose $14,000 on every EV and get three credits, or we can lose $50,000 on every fuel cell car and get seven credits. And you better comply. There's a $5,000 fine for every ZEV credit that you come up short. To me, this has disaster written all over it. Will the boards of directors of car companies who have a fiduciary responsibility to spend the shareholders' money wisely commit additional billions of dollars on these cars knowing they will never earn a return on that investment? You know, I do not have a problem with California's goal, but I do have a problem with the cost. So my question to all of you out there is, do you think that this is going to work? Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thank you for watching and please join us again tomorrow.